We've got shrimping, bears, adventure parks, big spiders, feisty grandpas. Welcome to Hometowns, my favorite episode of The Bachelor. And I'm going to give you the ending that Jesse Palmer couldn't, all on Clayton's eighth episode of his journey to find love. Welcome back. Clayton first travels to Virginia to meet Susie and her family on her hometown. Susie says she wants to know if Clayton likes being choked. She's referencing jujitsu, something that Susie started when she was traveling in Japan. Susie's instructor teaches Clayton a move called shrimping. When we get to the family visit though, Susie is obviously so close to her family. She tells Clayton earlier how heartbreaking it would be for her if she could, if her dad couldn't be there to walk her down the aisle. And Clayton said he hopes to live up to her expectations. Her father speaks so highly of Susie and how special Susie is. And I don't know if she, I know she's talked to you about it, but I got really sick last year. And on one of the worst nights, she slept next to my bed and would not leave my side all night. And that's the type of person you're getting. What's great is that her dad says she he trusts Susie explicitly. He trusts her judgment. And Clayton admits to Susie's mother that he's guarding his heart. But he says that he'll get there. And Susie's mom cautions her daughter. Proceed with caution. Wise words from Susie's mother. Now date two is the date with Gabby. Gabby her hometown happens in Denver, Colorado, where Gabby takes Clayton for a hike in the woods and tests his outdoor survival skills. She takes him to a place called Proposal Rock, where he jokes, she jokes, that Clayton should have brought a ring and then she would accept a proposal. They hike over to a random hot tub in the woods, and we've seen this before. You gotta feel bad for the intern who had to transport this hot tub in the middle of Nowhere, and in true bachelor fashion, they sip champagne, talking about who Clayton's going to meet that night. Gabby says that his father's girlfriend, who's recently been diagnosed with cancer, can't make it due to COVID, of course, and that he would be meeting her the grandpa, aunt, uncle, and cousin. I'm going to have to admit that prior to all of this, I was a little trepidatious. I was worried because Gabby talked about being estranged from her mother, and I wondered what the family actually would look like. But everyone showing up for Gabby, her family could not have been more delightful, especially her grandpa. His laugh when Gabby talks about the limo entrance was probably my favorite moment. <laughs> and grandpa saying that Clayton was BS, shows you where Gabby gets her wit and her humor. Then we get a honk with cards. What a touching moment. I'm not usually a crier, but I will have to tell you, this one got to me. Her father thanking her for being the glue in her family was precious. And the love was palpable in this family. Honestly, one of the sweetest hometowns I can remember. Now, I'm not sure why Clayton wasn't outside for the whole thing, but in a private moment with daughter and father, it felt like that was the right move. And then later, they two kiss when they're back in the house. Clayton talks about seeing himself being part of Gabby's family. And Gabby finally tells Clayton that she's falling in love with him. He says, there it is. He's excited too. Now date three, I'm holding my breath because data from The Bachelor data says that the third position, and remember, they're not all filmed in this way, is not usually a good one. Clayton travels to Oklahoma City to meet Serene and her family. She asks him if he's afraid of heights and she points to an adventure course. They have to climb and do something that looks kind of like a ropes course. Clayton was clearly nervous. He was holding on for dear life, walking across uh, these planks. And then, it's hilarious because Serene does it like she's walking across the street. Clayton was clearly scared, but good for him that he pushed himself through that. And then when he had to jump off an 80 foot drop, 
Serene does it as if she's jumping to the floor. She tells Clayton that in the evening portion, he's going to be meeting her mother, her brother Roland, and her best friend. Of course, her dad couldn't be there because it sounds like she's been estranged from him. The parents were divorced when she was two. Now that evening, Clayton meets Serene's family and they're a little bit more reserved. Her brother takes the role of the father and tells Clayton how happy though he is that Serene seems so open. But of course, he's worried that his sister could get crushed. And Roland calls Clayton out and says, Do you love her? Clayton says, I, um, to tell you the truth, like I haven't told anybody that I'm in love with them. Roland does not like that response, as you can imagine. But Serene has expressed to her mother that she's falling in love. She shows him the cute jar with the fireflies, and the mother seems to be impressed with that, too. Her brother is actually so sweet. But it's at this moment that we see Clayton start to crumble a little bit. He's feeling the pressure. How could you not? Families are getting involved. And the question is going to be, hey, are you going to step up for my daughter or not? Date for Clayton. His last stop is in Florida for a hometown with Rachel. They talk about how much they miss each other. Again, this is language I'm not hearing with any of the other women. But poor Rachel is losing her voice. Can we get the girl a lozenge? Like, can we get the other girls a tissue when they're crying? They go on a clear bottom kayak ride. They have a great time. And what's really sweet for me is that moment where there's the big spider. <laughs> but I thought that felt like one of the most authentic kind of moments that we see. And this is why I love this show. Here they are now. They're swimming in a pool where, didn't they just say that they were alligators in there earlier? But Rachel explains to Clayton that her father's going to be a really hard sell that night and she wants to forewarn him because he hasn't taken to anyone. She basically says, don't take it personally. But to soften the blow, Rachel reminds Clayton that she's falling in love with him. When we do meet her father, Tony, he asks Clayton some really good questions. The question I liked the best is, I all know her dreams. Wow. Clayton says, I want to support her dreams of being a pilot and would move for her. Wow. Haven't heard that before either. Clayton so eagerly wants Tony's blessings, but Tony realistically says, I can't give you my blessings until I speak with my daughter first. But if I do, I'm going to pat you on the arm on your way out. And once Tony does hear from Rachel herself about how lovely he treats her and she has no doubts about how he feels about her, that is the moment where we see this big tough guy that his bark is a lot stronger than his bite. And I just thought he was a big softy. And we see Clayton saying, I see a future more than ever with Rachel. Overall, I loved these hometown visits. They were lovely. No crazy characters, no obvious obstruction. Clayton now, at this point, tells Jesse, before the rose ceremony, that he's falling in love with all the women. And he doesn't want to hold back any longer. But what I imagine, of course, is the level of pressure that is getting to Clayton. He knows he's going to have to hurt somebody. But here's what doesn't fit for me. During the rose ceremony, he sends Serene home, but it's almost like he was mad doing so. Usually after you've met someone and their family, there seems to be a little bit more sentiment, more remorseful, even sad, but Clayton felt a bit cold to me. And Serene herself is not necessarily torn up in the limo ride home. Maybe she's relieved? Her brother forewarned her, hey, he's not all in. So here's what I think. And if I could advise Jesse Palmer, I would tell him what he should do. Now, I'm not sure if Chris Harrison would have done this because these may have been conversations that were never aired. But Jesse should have said to Clayton, word of advice, I was where you are and I know that you feel lonely and you feel scared. 
And it's hard to have to fake it with families in particular because you're gonna hurt three out of the four families. But I swear you are so close to the finish line. And trust me, and this is what I would tell Clayton if I were in this situation, trust me, you're going to be so relieved once you can express your love to your fiance at the altar because you're doing this for her and for you and your future. And to be even stronger, I would highly advise Clayton, do not tell three women that you love them. While you may think in this moment that it's a good idea and you feel that you owe the women some validation and you want to make them feel good about themselves, think about the bigger picture. It's going to be so hard to make one woman feel really special when you've watered that down with three women. That's my take. What I would love to know is your comments. Please leave them below and make sure you subscribe to Rose Therapy. I will see you next week when we've got two specials, Monday and Tuesday. We've got Fantasy Suites and the Women Tell All. Stay tuned for more.